Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. Today's video will be part one of a multi-part series that will go over how to create a Selenium page object model framework using Maven and TestNG. If you are not already subscribed to our channel but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button down below as we upload lots of testing related videos each week on a wide range of topics from integrating AI into testing to setting up automation frameworks in multiple languages. With that out of the way, let's get into what we'll be covering in today's video. So to successfully create a Selenium Palm object using Maven and TestNG, there are a few things we need to do. The first thing we need to do will be to create a new Maven project. Then we will need to add the packages structure for our framework. Next, we will create the Palm file and add the dependencies. Once that's created, we will create the base test, then we will create the base class, and finally create a properties file. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new project. So we'll open up IntelliJ and select the new project button. If that's selected, we'll verify that our project SDK is 1.8. And then we'll select next. We'll enter our name for our project. So we'll enter QA underground palm setup. Then we'll click finish. As you can see, it opens our project up in IntelliJ. So I'll expand our source tree here. As you can see in test, we don't have anything in there yet. So we're going to actually create our packages now. So we'll simply right click on Java, click add new package. The first one we'll name is framework. We'll do the same again, new package. We'll name this one page objects. And then we'll do another one, new package, and we'll name this one tests. Next we're going to add our resources file, so we'll simply right click on tests, click new directory, and then select the resources option. So under our palm.xml, let's start to begin to add the dependencies that we need. To do so, we'll just add a dependencies tag here, and then inside there we'll do a dependencies, it'll automatically generate this for us. Inside ID, we'll call this one org.testng. It'll automatically populate the rest of the artifact ID and the version, uh, and that's all we need for that one. The next dependency we're going to add is going to be org.selenium, hq.selenium. And again, once again, it will auto-populate the artifact and the version. For our next dependency, we are going to add io.github.benigarcia for our web driver manager. Uh, the version number we'll use there is 4.3.1. Our next dependency will be org.slf4j uh, and this one will be for our slf4j-simple. We'll add one last dependency and that will be org.slf4j and this one will be for the API so we'll simply replace simple with API. And with that, our palm is complete so we can reload our Maven changes. Now we're going to add our base test, so we're going to right click on Framework, New, Java Class. At the top, we're going to add all of our imports. The first one we'll do is import java.io.fileInputStream. Next we'll do import java.io file not found exception. Next we'll do import java.io.io exception. Next we'll do import java.util.properties. Next we'll import java dot util dot concurrent dot time unit. 
Next we'll do import io.github.bonigarcia.wdm.webdrivermanager. Next we'll do import org.openqa.selenium. And we'll put a wildcard there. Uh, and that is the last three imports that we'll need. So inside of our base test class, we'll create a public static web driver. We'll call that driver. Next, we'll do a public static properties. We'll call that prop. Next, we'll do public base test. Inside that block, we'll do try. Inside that try statement, we'll do prop equals new properties. Then file input stream IP equals new file input stream system dot get property. We'll pass in user.direct plus our source folder location, so slash src slash, and then plus our location to where our config property file will be. So I'll pass in test slash resources slash config dot properties. Next we'll do prop dot load, pass in IP. Add a catch here of file not found exception. E. Inside that block, we'll simply do E dot print stack trace. And then we'll actually add another catch here. I'm not 100% sure if we need this, but I want to add it anyway. So we'll do catch IO exception E. And then again, we will do an E dot print stack trace. And that will set us up to get our property values from our config.properties file. Next, we'll do a public static void initialization. Inside our initialization block, we'll do string browser name equals prop dot get property and we'll pass in browser. So this will be our browser from our config.properties file. Then we'll do if browser name dot equals Chrome. And inside that block, we'll do web driver manager dot Chrome driver dot setup. We'll do Chrome options. Call it Chrome options equals new Chrome options. Then driver equals new Chrome driver. and pass in our Chrome options. And then we will do driver.manage.timeouts.implicitly wait. And inside there we'll pass 20 seconds and a time unit of seconds. And then we will do driver.manage.window.maximize. And then we'll do driver.get and pass in our prop.get property for our URL. Now we can create our first helper method. So we'll do public void enter text by, and we will accept a by type and call that by, and then also a string type and call that text. Inside there we'll do web driver wait, call it wait equals new web driver wait, pass in our driver and our timeout in seconds. Next we'll do wait dot until Pass an expected condition dot element to be clickable. Not sure why that's red. Pass in our by type. 
Um, let's see why that is red. Should have found it. Let's go up here and look at our imports. Expected condition. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I see. We actually want expected conditions. Um, so that means we'll have to import our expected conditions as well. Um, so we have an extra import up here. We can get rid of this expected condition import, and that should work for that. Now we'll do driver dot find element and then pass in our by type. Then we'll do dot send keys and pass in our text that we want to pass to the element. Our next helper method will be a public void. We'll call this one enter return key. And this one will only expect a by type and we'll call that by as well. Inside here we'll once again set up our web driver wait. So we'll do web driver wait, call it wait equals new web driver wait, pass in our driver and our timeout in seconds. Then we'll do our wait dot until We'll pass in our expected conditions dot element to be clickable, and then we'll pass in our by type. And finally, we'll do driver dot find element, pass in our by type, and then do dot send keys. And instead of text this time, we'll pass in keys dot return, which will be the return key. And with that, we are done with our base test for now. Now we'll do a new Java class. We'll call this one base class. At the top we'll add one import and that will be import org.testng.annotations.star. And at the top of our public class base class we're going to extend that class to accept base test. Then we're going to do at before method. Then we're going to create a public void before method. And inside there, we're simply going to call that initialization method from base test. Next, we'll do a after method. Create a public void and call that after method. And inside that block, we're simply going to do driver.close and driver.quit. Next, we're actually going to create our properties file that we talked about earlier. So we're going to right click on resources, click new, file. We're going to call it config.properties. And there are two properties we're going to add to this file. One is called browser. We're going to equal that to Chrome. And the next is URL, and that we'll enter our test URL. For our case, it's going to be HTTP Google.com. And that will conclude part one of our series. Today we covered how to create a Maven project, add the project structure, created the POM file, and added the dependencies to it, then created the base test and base class files. If you are not already subscribed to our channel but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button down below as we upload lots of testing related videos each week on a wide range of topics from integrating AI into testing to setting up automation frameworks in multiple languages. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.